Okay, so who is the other suspect in the murder of American politics? Again, everybody has in the media proclaims that it's Trump, but that's a red herring. And the Democrats proclaim that it's Trump, but that's a red herring too. Nancy Pelosi has been around on the scene for quite a while. And Nancy Pelosi has been a deeply polarizing figure for also quite a while. I'm old enough to remember when just last year, she refused to pass a resolution condemning open anti-Semites like Gilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib inside her own caucus. I'm old enough to remember when Nancy Pelosi declared that boycott, divest, and sanctions of Israel were anti-Semitic, and then half of her caucus supported them. And then she was like, oh, okay, I guess it's not anti-Semitic anymore. Nancy Pelosi is one of the murderers. Okay, Nancy Pelosi at least is one of the suspects. She pretends to be the detective, right? I'm going to track down Donald Trump, and I'm going to pin him to the wall as the adult in the room. In reality, the lady's got some, the, the blood of American politics, that, that blood spatter from the corpse of American politics, it's all over her shoes. Okay, just as it is the shoes of the media. This is murder on the Orient Express. Okay, there are many suspects here. So Nancy, here's the proof. Nancy Pelosi yesterday, she does her own press conference and she is also childish and wild. So yes, Donald Trump's presser, not going to say it wasn't childish and wild. It was childish, wild and hilarious. Nancy Pelosi gave her own presser. It was childish and wild. Was there any blowback whatsoever? Of course not. Nancy Pelosi yesterday suggested in her press conference that Donald Trump looked sedated. Now imagine if Donald Trump had said that Nancy Pelosi looked sedated or like she was sucking on lemons, which she did. Imagine if he had said that. Then we'd be like, oh, look, again, he's coming to kill American politics. There he is, the axe murderer of American politics. Nancy Pelosi suggests the president is drugged and nobody says a word. I mean, it's unbelievable. I extended a hand of friendship to him to welcome him as the president of the United States to the people's house. It was also an act of kindness because I he looked to me like he was a little sedated. He looked that way last year, too. So, but he didn't want to shake hands. That was that. That meant nothing to me. It had nothing to do with my tearing up. That that came much later. Okay, again, this is it's it's so childish and so petty and so stupid. But she's been around a long time, right? She was the House Majority Leader in 2006, so she's been around a lot longer than Donald Trump. Pretending that the world started spinning in 2016 is the way for Democrats to avoid their culpability for the fact that Trump got elected in the first place. Pretending that Trump came along and he shattered all of the norms of American politics and broke everything—that's the way to avoid the inevitable conclusion which is that the Democrats and the media broke American politics. And then Trump came and he said, look, American politics is dead. And everybody went, oh, that's true. And then they voted for him. OK, so so all of this is going to as much as I don't like the the violation of norms by President Trump, as much as I criticize President Trump for being ridiculous and petty and vindictive and thin skinned, as much as I think that he pursues dumb strategies and going after Mitt Romney after Mitt Romney makes his vote and Trump gets acquitted, as much as I think all of that is foolish and counterproductive, I also recognize that foolishness and counterproductive action did not begin, nor will they end with President Trump, which means that in the end, I think the American people are going instead to turn to underlying facts when it comes to the 2020 election. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future content.